Hello everyone and welcome to Handmade Hero Show where we code a complete game live on stream. Uh, we are, so yesterday we did sort of one half of a thing and tomorrow we're going to do the, uh, today we're going to do the other half of the thing in a sense, like the forwards and backwards version. Because um, what we found yesterday was we wanted to get our camera frustum sort of stuff working properly. Frustum is the wrong word in this case because we're not really using that. We're just trying to get a rectangle in sort of level space that corresponds with the camera can see. So we fixed our unproject call. We went through the math there and fixed the problems with it that we had had. Because uh, remember we changed everything around and uh, we had never really gone back and made that thing really work right. So we do now. So we fixed that part and that part was important for fixing stuff like uh, knowing uh, what to query for the lighting uh, and stuff like that because we need we need boundary regions uh, for a bunch of computational stuff that we do in Handmade Hero and so what we need to know there right is we need to know the bounds of what the camera can see uh, so that we make sure that we never um, like don't for example don't compute lighting for something that the camera can not see because if we don't compute the lighting from the camera can see it will show up as an obvious visual glitch so we fixed that part of it but now today we need to do the opposite of that because what we the other thing that i said i want to fix um uh, in the sort of system to sort of get things into a more smooth state and i'll show you what i mean um actually right now as well let me go ahead and uh uh, do a build here. There we go. Um, so the other thing that I said that I want to fix is, okay, we got the lighting stuff, and you can see now if I, if you can see the the bounds are nice and tight to where the camera was, uh, and as we move, you can see the lighting uh, computation move with it, uh, so that if you're here, uh, you never really see any lighting glitches. Uh, you um, you always have everything that's within the camera view uh, being sent to the lighting solution, which is exactly what we wanted, and that fixes the bug. Now, the other thing that I want to fix was the camera. Uh, right now, we have not really gone in and got the camera working properly. Now that we kind of know exactly what uh, we're doing here, uh, there's no excuse for not making the camera work properly, so that's what I want to do. In order to get that working properly, uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do the opposite of what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we were asking the fundamental question, if I take a given camera position, which is where the camera is right now, how much of the level can I see so I know how much of it to light? That was the question we were asking, right? And in addition to lighting, we might want to do other things, right? Um, now we're going to be asking the question as we want the camera to start working more properly. Uh, we're going to be asking the opposite question, which is if I specify a given area of the level, like for example, I'm in this hallway um, or I'm in this room or that room or somewhere out here in the dungeon or who knows what, um, if I decide to do those things uh, and I want to always know that when I'm in a particular room, I want to be able to see everything that is in that room, uh, then I put myself in a position where I need to ask the opposite question. And the opposite question is, given a region of the game um, that I'm telling you a priori I want to see completely, how do I make sure that I pick a camera location that does see it completely? Right. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do effectively is, is the opposite thing. One was camera location, give me uh, the region that can be seen. So like this white box, right, is the region that the camera can see. So we just know that's what the camera can see um, for on a given slice of, on a given, um, that's what I'm looking for, uh, for a given like area, uh, so the camera has a certain distance that we're looking at, and we know that we're looking at this, you know, slice of the world. At that distance, what is the rectangle the camera can see was the question we were asking. And that was the forward question, from a camera to a rectangle. And so now we want to ask the reverse question. If I feed in a rectangle and say, at this distance, if a rectangle was this big, how far back from the rectangle would I have to go before I can see the whole thing, right? So that's what I need to know now. Uh, and so it's not exactly the reverse question, but it's a very similar, it, it, it's the reverse question semantically. It's just not the inverse mathematically in any real sense. Uh, so it's kind of, uh, I'm not sure what you would call it, but it's definitely the opposite question in terms of semantics. 
Uh, one other thing that you'll note, so you notice when I hop from here to here, to big room, big room to big room, uh, you'll notice how, it, well, if, for example, if I let the camera settle in here, like so, and then I hop out, you see how part of the level disappears first? That's because it's falling out of the simulation region there really quickly as the simulation just kind of snaps over. Um, one thing we can do there is we can include, we can force the inclusion um, of the old simulation region until the camera move finishes. And that's something that we'll also want to do, again, to avoid visual glitches. Uh, because we don't really want to allow, uh, we don't want to um, have anything that sort of, for lack of a better term, breaks the illusion of permanence of the world. You know, we know because we wrote the game uh, that the game only exists right where you are, you know. And, um, and well, and we also have the ability to simulate th sort of things on background threads and stuff like that. So, but we know that there's a subset of the actual world that's ever really being looked at here and what we want to do as much as possible when we're making the engine is limit the degree to which the player feels that li that limitation right we would like them to sort of believe um for the most part like part of the suspension of disbelief there we would like them to believe that the entire game is in existence at all times and so things like having part of the world drop out when you switch the simulation to from room to room uh, isn't isn't something we want to have happen and so what I'd like to do is again like make sure uh, that that sort of thing um, is is never really perce perceptible to uh, the to the player right now what you can see uh, be what you can see happening is this purple region here when I move like that uh, the purple region is just cutting it off right that's what's happening so we have two choices there one is we can enlarge the purple region but I don't really want to enlarge the purple region because enlarging the purple region costs us more resources. So rather what I do is, what I'd rather do is say, look, let's assume that the purple region from the last room you're in, maybe we assume that that region is merged with the new region temporarily while the camera transitions. And then once the camera has successfully transitioned out, you know, we will then drop that region from consideration or something, right? Another thing we can do is can do a continuous slide, like we can sort of slide the region slowly away. Uh, we do have reasons why we might not want to do that. There's a lot of different concerns at play here, but uh, there's a lot of things we could do. So one thing we could do is merge them. So for example, uh, a really simple way, and there's some reasons why we might not want to do this. We can get into those reasons later, and I'll put it to do in there to look at it, but uh, just really quickly I can show you what I mean, um, is we can take we because we know where the camera is right we can take the camera rectangle and we can use that as part of the simulation uh, region automatically to make sure that it's always in right so if we take a look here uh, when we're doing um, our uh, our simulation region determination uh, we have this inf information here like camera bounds and meters and, and world camera rect and, and that kind of uh, junk there so when we produce the sim bounds like we do here, uh, what we can do is merge the camera rec in. So what I could do is say sim bounds equals, uh, you know, the union um, of these two rectangles, like the world camera rec and the simulation bounds. I can union those two together, and that would ensure that I always have at least that part um, there. So now what you can see is uh, even the, the world itself kind of still continues to be in play at that point. And so now what you can see is as I move around, uh, you, you no longer get that same glitch where everything drops out. Now, we probably need a little bit of a safety apron there. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not seeing any glitching at the moment. There it is. You see, do you see that glitching right at the thing? Um, that's because, again, the bounds are sort of like an in or out thing, and an entity has a bigger radius than the bounds. So really, in here, you know, you would want to, to enlarge the sim bounds slightly. Um, in to, to to account for that uh, apron so you know if we wanted to we could do also this uh in, in fact i suppose the um uh the world camera rect here could have uh an add radius to uh, applied to it uh and uh so inside add radius to uh, here we could just say, look, uh, let's say we add, you know, you know, five meters on, on either side of that, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra, 
uh, coverage there or something. And then once we have that, uh, then I think we would know for certain that we would not see that glitch because now we've got a little bit of a safety apron um, and now we would know that all, uh, we would never allow stuff to drop kind of out of the simulation region uh, if the camera can see it, right? So it's just an extra le le uh, like added level of protection there um, that's just good for, for uh, it's just good for business there, right? Um, and so now what you can see if I hop around here, uh, you can see that as we slide around, you can see that safety apron uh, making sure that the purple region never contracts too early uh, and that keeps that uh, glitch from happening. So, you know, like I said, that's an easy fix for now. There's reasons why we may not want to do it. Um, and, uh, and I'll just put briefly in here. So one of the things that we did was we have these sort of notions of collected entities, right, uh, that we call brains, which are when you have entities that maybe want to be made up of multiple parts. So for example, let's suppose that we have one of our little snake entities that's going around. Uh, one of the problems that you would get with a sliding simulation region like that is part of the snake might be moved out of the simulation region while another part is still in. And the problem with that that you would see, uh, again, is just that it doesn't allow, um, it, it, it doesn't, it, it could lead to bugs where entities get separated by that window and then you end up with a snake that's in two halves for no reason, right? Uh, we did add some protection for that. And I just, again, I just want to flag it as something because that's a fairly complex part of this system. It's the hardest part really, I think, that we'll have to get right. Uh, and so I just want to be aware of it as we go forwards uh, to make sure that we don't have uh, a problem with that. But uh, I believe we did add some protection to that. Uh, I think, I don't know why we still have that move entity call. We got to get rid of some of that. But um, I do think there was something in here that we did. Um... And I just, I don't quite remember, but I do remember a sort of, uh, I do remember a sort of like hemming and hawing about that. I just don't remember. It's been a while. Yes, I mean, I'm sorry I don't remember this very well. I just, I probably don't really want to go down this rat hole at the moment because it's really just not relevant. But hopefully those of you who watch the show regularly will remember what I'm talking about. Um, uh, and maybe we didn't do it, uh, and I just am forgetting, but I'm pretty sure we did, uh, where we sort of had a thing that would go, oh yeah, like, you know, if you unpack the brain of this thing, then unpack all of it or stuff like that there was some kind of thing uh, that tried to do that
So yeah, sorry, I, I mean, I'm, I apologize for not knowing exactly where that is. We'll have to go back and look it up again. I'm pretty sure there was something that we at least tried, and maybe we decided that that just wasn't uh, really something that we were going to pursue, and I deleted it or something like that. But I'm pretty sure we did something uh, where we tried to make it so that brains would get uh, a little bit preferential treatment so that as entities uh, got packed or unpacked, they tried to pack into the same chunks, even perhaps unnecessarily or weird things like this. Uh, and I just don't quite remember uh, what we did for that. I think it had to do with the fact that if something was in the apron, it would pull it into the active set. Uh, so I, I don't really remember. Um, so anyway, point being, when we go to look at that code again at some point, it's just something that I wanted to make sure that we uh, were aware of. And, you know, that's uh, just neither here nor there. So anyway, getting back to what I wanted the rest of the topic of today to be is now what I want to do is make sort of a dynamic camera zoom level, if you will. If you remember how we were doing this, uh, in the camera uh, code where we just have a very basic uh, update, ca update camera for entity movement code, um, what we did here is we sort of said, look, uh, we're just going to hard code what the target offset Z is unless we see some kind of an override uh, from like a, a camera volume that's, that's you know, telling us that we want to focus on something else. So that's a totally reasonable thing to do. Uh, and we can sort of leave that system in place and just improve it. You can see we've got uh, also room boundary problems here. So I don't know if you can see what's happening there. Uh, so what's happening there is we didn't set our room boundaries up properly. So the hero, when he's on the square in between two rooms, it can't decide which camera to pick, right? Uh, so we want to fix that as well. And that's pretty easy to fix as well. Uh, but that's a separate issue. Uh, so anyway, ignoring that temporarily, uh, just getting back to what I was talking about. So what we want to do here is we want to say, all right, uh, let's start making sure that we always have that camera information. So this, uh, which is what we were using before, which says how high up you want to be, uh, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, so if I recompile the game here, you can see me zoom in. This is the appropriate level of zoom for this room, perhaps. Now, maybe we don't ever want to be that close, so maybe there's a minimum that's like here or something. So even though we really could be closer on that room, we won't be, we'll just be this as a minimum. This is the level of zoom that we want for this room. But when we come to this room, right, it's not quite sufficient. So we could do one of two things. And again, this is really up to us when we're designing the levels. Uh, in the generator, it's logic that puts out this room can make a decision about which one it wants. Either we want the camera to scroll, which is something we want to specify here, right? Uh, or we want it to zoom out, but we want it to do one of those two things. Uh, so probably, you know, what I would want to do most of the time is just zoom out so the player can see the whole room. Um, and so that requires a zoom level of something, you know, quite a bit uh, substantially uh, wider here, like so. Uh, like something like that, right? Um, and so we need the camera to be able uh, to to uh, understand that when the room gets bigger, it needs uh, the bigger zoom level, right? So what we want to do is really one of two things. And I don't know which one of these two things we actually want. Um, it may be that we really don't want to go the math route on this one. And the reason I say we might not want to go the math route on this one is it may just be more about tuning. So uh, it may just be more about the fact that, you know, we want to set uh, whatever this value is. And um, yeah, we just want that to be whatever it is. Now, you can see we got another thing we want, we're going to want to fix when we do this as well, uh, which is that right now the fog level is hard coded. So eventually, if I get far enough out, like let's say I wanted to set this as the zoom level, well, that it, it'll everything will fog out, right? 
um, you can kind of see how everything is is uh, is beginning to uh, get reduced uh, color wise and eventually I get far enough out it'll actually fall out of the clip plane even right uh, not to mention the fact that we'll blow out our lighting buffers here but that's a sort of separate issue right um, so one of the other things we have to do is if we want to support uh, zoom levels that are you know more uh, th that allow those those bigger rooms to all be in view um, then what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to set the fogging uh, so that the fogging correctly adapts right the fog can't just be at a hard-coded level the fog has to kind of be um, more reasonable now I don't know if we ever really want this kind of a zoom level uh, is the other problem so I'm thinking maybe you know the zoom has to top out at some point I'm not sure where that point is so it may be like this is where the zoom tops out uh, like this is how far back out we go anyway and what we may do is just allow scrolling inside rooms that are this big uh, right and the normal room is one that just fits in here right the normal rooms uh, will be about this size uh, and then um, you know and then we'll go from there uh, so that's my thinking on this anyway uh, at, in so much as I've I've uh, done it uh, that's what I'm thinking Ooh, excuse me Ooh. Um, so I think what I want to do here is I think I just want to stick with the, with the hand coded option. Uh, I think I want to just go ahead and have a table, which is that like for different kinds of rooms that my generator generates, I want them to just have something that I specified, uh, where I said specifically, this is how, um, this is how far the camera should be away uh, away for a room of this size and I tune it manually uh, to what I wanted because I think it's just a preference issue and I don't think the math is going to help us here like the math will just give us an approximate answer uh, that's like whatever the exact bounds would be that's a, an approximate answer for what a human might want to see but a human might want it tuned a little out or a little in from there or whatever and the math is not going to tell us that I don't think so I think it's not really worth doing that math it's my assumption anyway. Don't quote me on that. All right, I'll stop marveling at the profile now. Okay, so uh, what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and just actually start looking at the um, uh, the camera stuff here. You can see the uh, the room volume information. Uh, effectively, what I want to do, I think, is maybe make the room volume. I mean, I think what we want to do is those room volumes want to be always have the camera offset in them right uh, because you can see here the only time that we do take a target offset Z from the from the data is when there's a special camera but I don't think we actually want to do it that way I think we want to take it from the room always uh, and then um, and then have the the special camera just be additional things that can be specified uh, but that's about it. So in here where we do uh, type brain room, uh, that probably wants to get that information uh, directly out of there. So, so I'm gonna say we want something more like this. So just in general, whenever there's a room, that room should specify an offset Z. Um, and uh, 
that is just a property uh, of the of the entity itself. Now we've already got that in there for special cameras, uh, I believe. Let me see here. Don't quote me on that. Um, so I guess we could just use like the camera offset Z. Uh, and for that matter, I suppose the XY could be specified as well. I don't really want to do that part yet. And this may want to get this, this may want to get sort of, um, upgraded a little bit too, uh, but yeah, so that, okay, so I, I feel like we've got basically the building box we need here. I'm gonna start with this one, and I think what we'll also do is we'll put, we can roll all of this, I think, together a little bit better and specify whether we want, um, whether we want there to be scrolling. I think that could come in here as well. Uh, so we'll see, we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> Uh, so if I go back in now to my world, the world generator, I mean, one of the things that should happen immediately is if I specify this, we should uh, immediately sort of suck directly in because that'll be set to zero normally. And so we'll just go like, blah, uh, and, and it'll just be a, a, a nightmare, right? Uh, I'm guessing. So yeah, like uh, we're zero away and I feel like that's a degenerate condition, right? Um, <clears throat> so you pretty much never want this to be uh, set to that. What we can do in the world gen code then is just make sure we always set it to something. Oop, that's the room gen code actually. Uh, make sure we always set it to something. Uh, and so in here where we, uh, where we do um, camera room like this, uh, what we wanna do is just specify here, camera room, uh, camera offset, Z, uh, that would set it to 16 is what we had it before for all rooms, right? Uh, and so now whenever you move around, it'll set it, right? But what we want to do now is have a table that sort of decides um, based on the dimensions of the room, what's going to happen, right? Uh, and so in order to do that, I'm just going to sort of create a little formula here and then tweak it to my preferences uh, and we'll go from there. So what I want to do is, is say, look, I know how big we made the room. I've got X count and Y count, and those pretty much tell me. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to here sort of figure out what the zoom level is. Uh, so maybe I'll do something like, uh, get offset, uh, uh, get camera offset Z for dimensions. Uh, and I'll pass the X count and the Y count. And I'll just say that this thing um, has to, you know, has to have a way of determining for a given X and Y dimension, what should a, it actually produce, right? And so I sort of said, well, like maybe 12 is like the answer uh, in all situations that aren't handled some other way. Uh, so like, for example, maybe this is just the the default, right? Um, and then we adjust uh, things a little bit depending on, on uh, what else it is. So I don't know, maybe this is like as far out as we get, um, but then when we come into something like this, uh, maybe we zoom in a little bit and, and so on and so forth, right? So I'm not sure about that. Maybe I want it a little bit bigger, maybe I don't. Um, again, this is something that can be tweaked all throughout the game design process. Um, and also, since I'm not a game designer, I a, a priori absolve myself from making any good decisions. But point being, architecturally speaking, I think it's the right decision to put it in here because that way, if one was a game designer and did have an idea of what they were doing, um, you would be able to do it uh, just fine. Okay. So let's suppose that we're going to do that here. Uh, then what we want to do, I think, is determine sort of an X uh, version and a Y version, and then take whichever one is greater. Uh, because remember, what we're going to do is say, well, we've got a certain way we might want to do the camera based on widths of things, and a certain way we might want to do the camera based on heights of things, um, in terms of, of rooms, widths, and height. Or I should say maybe X and Y dimension uh, in the plane. 
And so I want to have a formula for each of those, and then I want to take whatever one wants to be further out, because our, our preference will always be to go further out. So if, you, if you'd want to be a certain distance to see this width and a certain distance to see this height, well, we'll take whichever one is maximum because that's the one that would be preferred, right? We don't want to, if you said you wanted to be this far out to see one of these two things, we don't want to move you in closer than that, certainly, right? Uh, so we'll do something like x dist um, and y dist here, right? Uh, and those will both be at zero. Um, or maybe we'll make this at the minimum. So I don't know what the minimum would be. Uh, maybe the minimum, what, what is the minimum that we'd want to be? Let's find out. Is that like eight? Is eight too close? Um, so, you know, I don't know, maybe eight's a little too close. Maybe it's more like 10. Maybe, you know, I don't know how much uh, variability there's gonna be here exactly. Um, but that seems like, you know, eh, meh. So this room is what, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What is this like? Uh, it's good counting, Casey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is a 13 wide room, I think, is that right? Yeah, it's a 13 wide room. Um, so given that that's a 13, that that's a room that has 13 squares in it, um, you know, for 13 squares, I think 10 would, would be good. 10 was a good one, right? Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that like, uh, if the X count, um, is less than 13, uh, I would leave it at 10, right? So basically what we're talking about, if it's greater than 13, um, that's when we would actually start to care. So looking at this, maybe what I'll say is like, okay, uh, the X disc tops out at like 14 or whatever we said that uh, large amount was gonna be somewhere else. So if the X count is uh, greater than yeah if the x count is greater than like some number we want there i'm not sure what that number would be but let's say we have a couple ones here So we do something like say, well, assume it's 10. Uh, if we're anything uh, over one of these, then we'll, uh, then we'll set it to something more specific. Uh, I'm not sure what that has to be, but like somewhere in here, we end up getting to a room that's the biggest we want. And after that, it's just 14 all the way, right? Uh, so I don't know, we set this. to something randomly like that. You know, this is all we're kind of talking about here and we can make a more convenient function for this uh, later. Uh, and then at the end, we just say like the result is whichever is the larger of those two. So, What's the Y count? It's gonna be quite a bit less, I would say, uh, just because of the eccentricity, the difference between those two, right? So maybe this is more like this sort of thing. Again, I'm not really sure. Oops. Um, so now if I run it, you know, like in this room, uh, which is sort of the smallest room I would expect. And I, I think I can even look, right? Cause we, we have the Delta. Oh no, that was the Delta from Sim. Um, I, should, I should just write out what that is. So for example, uh, inside worlds mode, 
uh, in here we've got, uh, I specify the, the delta from sim there. Uh, let me also just specify the camera offset that we're using. Um, and so that's uh, right here. And that kind of tells us uh, what this room ended up getting set to, right? Uh, so if I look through here and I say like, okay, um, here's the offset Z, it should be set to 10 for the smallest rooms, right? And it is, uh, that's what that's uh, approaching there. Uh, when I move out to a larger room, uh, in theory, it should get larger if it needs to. This room still fits entirely uh, so that it doesn't actually have to. Um, but let's say I go to the room to the right, that room would probably get bigger, right? Uh, and so there we've zoomed out. Now, we haven't quite zoomed out big enough, um, but I, that's the maximum sort of that we were saying we would do, right? So, you know, that's why it didn't, um, is because we don't want to let it go over 14. Uh, and I think that's reasonable. Uh, Anyway, you can see this is working nice and smooth now, right? It just picks the right size for various rooms. The only thing that we have now is we may want to do uh, something about the scrolling, right? So we may want to make it so that large rooms like this don't actually zoom out. Uh, they just stay at 14 and, and scroll around slightly depending on, um, you know, depending on where the player is inside the room. So that's about the only thing we'd have to do. Now, before I do that, because I would like to do that, but before I do that, um, what I would like to do is, yeah, and you know, you can see too, do you see what a nice feeling that gives the game already, right? Um, it's really nice to have that sort of quiet zoom in. Uh, it just feels nice when you're doing it, um, right? It's just getting smaller and bigger, just it's... Again, it adds visual interest to the game and it's just, it's kind of a pleasant, right? It's just kind of a pleasant thing. Um, so I think that's great and that's just something that we want to uh, just keep in mind. Like little things like that, they make a game, the more of those you have in a game, just it's just a pleasant graphical thing and, and that's why people are playing a game, right? You know, if you, if you didn't care about graphics, if you didn't care about audio visual feedback, you wouldn't bother playing a video game. Uh, you could just play something pen and paper, right? Um, so there's a reason that you're playing a video game and it's stuff like that, right? You want the game design to be good, obviously, um, but you want that game design to be backed up by nice, good feeling audio and visual uh, uh, reinforcement because that's the whole point of the game being on a computer right, is to have that sort of thing. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this bug now. Uh, like I said, I believe this is just because we need overlap. We, we can't have the rooms being divided on a boundary. We want the thing to be in between the two. Um, uh, we just need this to be calculated more accurately, right? It's not being calculated properly right now. Uh, and so we end up splitting a tile instead of keeping the tiles in the rooms themselves, right? So that's just, it's just wrong. Um, so we want to fix that first before we go any further because that's where the main part of the bug is coming from is that this is wrong. That's just not correct. Uh, all right, so... So if we look at this, the problem is that these uh, are sort of off by a half, right? Uh, min tile X should be a half, include a half extra, because I mean, just look at uh, what the bounds are here. You can see what I'm talking about. It runs right down the middle and that's, you know, correct. What we were computing there was an accurate computation. It was computing the centers of tiles, right? And the problem is that we've got it off. So uh, instead of computing uh, the boundary of the room, what we've computed is the center of the tile that we're on and then the, 
width of the room correctly, but what that does is it puts us on the center of the next room's tile. So this whole thing needs to be shifted back by half a tile in, right, in order to get the correct um, address there. So when we do this, we're producing a correct size. That's not actually the problem. The size is correct. Um, the problem is the volume that we're actually producing is offset incorrectly, right? Uh, so for example, when we do this place entity here uh, and we've got the chain center, uh, that's the problem that we're seeing. This, this is, is gonna be skewed, I believe. So now we're not really looking at this. We're looking at this. This we're not actually drawing at the moment. We should probably draw this. Um, in fact, I guess I can draw that. Um, so this will draw probably way too many um, of these things, but it should also draw the room boundary. Uh, and so there you can see the room boundary. Uh, one interesting thing you can see about that is, and this I believe is also because of the way we're computing the change volume. So again, all this stuff is nice to go get right. What you can see is that it's actually aligned okay um, on one axis, but not on the other. And you might be like, well, how did that happen? The answer is because of the way we computed the chain center. Um, so all these things are relative to the chain center here. Uh, and uh, here we go into that code. Do you see this? So what ends up happening is if the X count is even, you will get it aligned one way. And if it's odd, you'll get it aligned the other way because of the rounding on there, because this is integer, right? Um, so what we want to do is just make that be more rigorous and actually align it up with where the room actually is. Uh, but what we would see is certain rooms would align differently. If, a, if it had an even number, it would align one axis. If it has an odd number, it would align. Um, if it has an even number, it would align to the center. If it's an odd number, it would align to the boundary or vice versa. I didn't quite think it through which one would be which. Uh, but that's exactly what we're seeing is that uh, difference there. And that's why some are aligned and some aren't. So now our job is just to go ahead and get those collision volumes uh, to be lined up correctly. Um, and so that's what we'll go ahead and do here, right? Okay. Uh, so when we talk about the chain center, um, so just looking at how this works, right? The change rectangle and the chain center uh, they're going to be rounded to a tile. And I think that's probably what we want. So, right, like we want to... Yeah, so so we don't, I guess now that I think about it, since all of the entities are, are created really agnostic of the chain center, because the, you can see here, uh, everything is, is done with a place entity call with an absolute position, right? So we're sort of placing all of our entities correctly either way. So really this chain center could do whatever we want, right? We, we don't really have to have this being aligned in any particularly good way. It doesn't really matter, right? So in a sense, this can be whatever it wants. The problem comes when we come down here to the room um, placement. What we're, the problem really is that we're using the chain center as where the room is, but that's not where the room actually is. What we need to do is compute the actual center for real about where the room really is in reality, right? And that has to include if there is a half tile offset in here, that has to be respected, right? So we can't, the chain center has been rounded. We don't want it to be rounded, right? We don't want this rounding to be uh, happening that way. 
So that's the part that we need to fix is this place entity call has to take the collision volume for the room and line it up right. And while we're at it, we'd like to fix this one too because this uh, sort of thing that we'll use for mapping later, I think. I'm not sure what we're, how we're gonna do the mapping. That's why we have that add world room thing in there is just for that purpose. Um, that's, that's the other part of that that we wanna be able to do, right? So we want that to be accurate as well. It doesn't really matter if it's accurate, but we would like it to be accurate because why not? Right. Um, so yeah. So this size is correct. This is off by a half tile, potentially, uh, in either direction. And the question is, how do we actually figure out where it is in that sense, right? How do we figure out what the center of it actually is? Uh, well, what I assume we wanna do here is say, look, we know whether or not each of these dimensions was odd or even, and so we sort of know, uh, well, you know what? I would say maybe we just, just compute the center maybe more directly, right? Um, so if we want to, these two things uh, are the, these are the two positions of the min tile and the max tile, right? So I think what we could do is say, let's just go ahead and get these two. Because if we get these two values, the min p and the max p here, uh, Uh, if we get those two values, and I think this world room, this, this doesn't really need to be. In here, by the way. Since we're going to do the cameras with the standard volume stuff. Uh, if we have these two values, then what I can do is actually just take their, their centroid uh, and be done with it, right? So we know this is the center of the tile and we want these to really be based on the min and the max of the tile. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to like map these in and then also offset them, right? Uh, and what we could do, in, in fact, when we have chunk position from tile position, um, we can offset that. I don't know if if this takes uh, an offset, it does. So when we do chunk position uh, from tile position there, what we can do is specify negative uh, half tile offset uh, and positive half tile or something like that, right? So we can pull out to the, to the tile dimensions there uh, in either direction all we want. And so all we need is to know how much half a tile is uh, and that is something that should be specified, right? Um, so the way this actually does it is like this, right? And that's kind of a little ad hoc with the tile side and meters thing. Um, it kind of feels like that's something that wants to be more of a generative situation. I'm curious. So yeah, what you can see here, and this is sort of, again, starting to clean up something that always bugged me, which is the tile information. Um, so I don't know why I can't quite get this to in right there. Uh, so one of the things that we might want to do there is say, look, now we can kind of finally see where that information should go. Uh, so like chunk position from tile position at this point, I would say is something that should rely on the generator actually, uh, less the world, more the generator, right? Uh, so I would like to see this turn into this. 
Here's our, there it is. I would like to see this turn into this. Uh, and I would like to see this be something that comes from here. Uh, because really our entire world system cares not at all about tiles, right? Nothing cares about tiles at all. The only thing that cares about tiles is the generator because it wants to place things in a grid sometimes, right? And so when it's doing that, it wants to know about tiles. Everybody else doesn't care about tiles. So that's the right place finally, after so much uh, of us playing around, we finally see emergently where tiles should live. They should live there. Uh, so now this goes into the uh, world generation code, right? Uh, where we know that at a startup time here, uh, when we actually go uh, to, to begin this, um, I guess that's begin world gen, uh, this is where that gets set, like so. Uh, this information now, uh, the tile side in meters, that uh, finally can get rid of that to do. Uh, and then the tile depth in meters, uh, again, should always come from the generator. So really, these things are making me grumpy. Probably just my ears are clogged. Um, so really all we want to do here is just say this also now always comes uh, from the generator as well. And I think the world would then get passed in here uh, as something we should always have. Oddly enough, Oh, the sim region is there. Uh, but I, I'm going to hoist the world out because it's always going to have one. Yeah. So that all looks good to me. I don't know that we really want that at the end of the day uh we may change how that gets specified at some point um Uh, but that's roughly what we want there and if i take a look at uh at who else was interested in that, then I can start to, yeah, to... Yeah, then I can start to just clean this code up and just finally get that stuff done. Uh, so let's go ahead and finish this. Uh, I know that I want um, the tile dimension to be in there. Um, I know the world can come out of the generator easily because so it's going to be there. I know that these all need to be calling gen instead of worlds, but that's fine because I always have that. This stuff here, again, is the tile dim. This is great because now this stuff can go away, right? That never happens anymore. Uh, and this can just be gen, or this can just be tile dim x. Tile dim Y, tile dim Z, and tile dim can just be pulled out here uh, at the outset. And that's all great. Again, that's gen. Tile dim X, tile dim Y, tile dim Z. Uh, and half tile dim is now just that. 
And that's awesome, and I love all of that. Because that totally now finally answers the question of where that stuff belongs. It belongs right there. Uh, and now we can just say, for once and for all, we're done with that, right? So that's good. Uh, okay, so now we go back to what we were doing before, uh, which is let's go ahead and try to make sure these things are aligned properly. Uh, so what I was doing uh, first there is trying to make sure that I aligned um, the, uh, the, the add room call. And what you can see here is uh, I accidentally screwed up. Uh, we want to shift it back by the same amount in both cases. And I actually expanded it by an entire tile. So this should not have been a plus, right? That was supposed to be a minus, uh, so my bad there. But otherwise, I think we had everything roughly correct. And now you can see uh, that those bounds correctly encompass the room. Now, what I don't know um, is how we want to deal with Z. So that's a little bit confusing, like it's in terms of how far down or up these rooms should uh, extend. That part, I don't know. I think that's off. And I think the reason that that's off um, is because if you look at what happens inside the world gen uh, chunk thing there, there it is, you can see that we do like an offset um, automatically on everything to make sure that it kind of lines up uh, with how we were thinking about tiles. So I don't know what we want to do about that. Um, So the reason that that was in there uh, is because the floor information, we, uh, yeah, like, I don't think we really thought it through very much. We kind of just were always hand wavy a little bit about that stuff. So, you know, the centers of things... I feel like, like, I feel like we just don't really want that to be happening. I feel like we want to treat all these things uniformly to a certain degree. And, you know, so, I, you know, I'm tempted to just say, oops, I'm tempted to just say we want that. Uh, and then we want our rooms to just be aligned however we want to align them, right? So when we look uh, at what ends up happening there, we want to just make sure that we um, uh, align the rooms properly based on the half top boundary. So we would like move everything down and that in theory would also solve the other problem. I'm not sure about that. And we should probably draw the chunk boundaries in here as well. Either way, it's something we want to get correct. So I don't really know how we want to go about doing that part, but now is as good a time as any to make sure that we get this stuff right. Let me finish what I was doing here, and then let's go tackle that alignment problem by drawing the chunks and figuring out whether we want this anymore and figuring out how those are going to break down into room boundaries. Um, so if we take this where we have the min room and the uh, P and the max room P. Uh, when we go to places entity, we can create a room center here. Uh, and the room center would just be the difference between these two, right? Um, so if you imagine a, uh, a room center here, uh, what we want to do is, let's see where we have our world code. Here we go. Uh, so what we want to do here is take the difference between these two things, right? 
Uh, so we want to say, look, if we have the min room p and the max room p, and we took the difference between them, that would tell us how to get from one to the other. So then we can just do, look, uh, we just want to map uh, that into one of our canonical coordinates uh, from the min room p back. And that's it, right? Um, so that should give us an actual room center based on the bounds we actually computed. Uh, and furthermore, the simple collision volume here now no longer would have to do it that way. We could just use the subtract. Uh, so for example, what we could do here is say uh, room dimension. Uh, so there's a room dimension uh, or uh, you know, room dimension in meters, room dimension in meters, room dimension in meters. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so the room dimension meters in the room center now all give us that information that we actually wanted. Uh, and in theory, that would give us uh, so that the room in both cases is placed on the same rectangle in both systems so everyone knows uh, where everything is. Uh, the only thing I don't know is, is this ampersanded? It is. Um, this takes not a v3, I guess. Uh, the collision volume stuff probably is going to want to get a little bit better soon too as well as we move forward, but now is not the time to, to dive into that uh, situation. Oops. So I broke something. I'm just not sure what. Let's take a look. Uh, so I'm going to jump into that room gen call there. Uh, and I'm going to go. See what's up. There's our tile dim looks fine. Uh, here's our min room p, max room p. Uh, also looks fine. Uh, here's our room dim in meters. Looks good. Uh, and what about our room center? So I guess I don't really know what this call even does. I should probably look. Ah, okay. So yeah, so some of this stuff is a little bit borked, right? You can kind of see Yeah, we don't we don't really want that anyway. Um, so this collision volume is the collision volume really just a rectangle? I'm confused. Cause I thought we were allowed to have like multiple pieces of collision or something like that. Maybe we deleted that. In that case, this is just, forget it. Like, why did, we, why did I even bother? Uh, we know what the room dimension is in meters. Uh, so, you know, in, in fact, we don't even have to do any of that. This, this we, we could just avoid the subtract altogether. What we could really do is just say, Uh, something like this. What was that? 
call. Get some relative position. We really should, if we call it map into chunk space, this should probably be called map into sim space. Uh, to be symmetric there. And then when we set the collision volume for the entity, uh, since we're placing the entity at the room center, uh, then the collision volume should just be the volume from the min to the max, right? Um, and that'd be that. So that's what I think we want those collision volumes to look like. There we go. So map into sim space. I just need the uh, sim region. Sorry, creation region. Is region just Yes, it is. And in fact, when does that get set? So that's dead code as well. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> if we know the min room P and the max room P here, uh, right, we could just find those in in, uh, in sim space and then just say that the entity is placed at the chain center and then we'd be done, right? Um, of course, placing the entity might be important. I don't know if it is or not. Um, so that part's a little bit dicey. Um, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that one way or the other. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but point being, we can just do that and then I think it's, it would just be accurate, I think. Uh, let me actually see here. So now you can see everything lining up nicely. Uh, let me go back to um, the optimized build. Uh, And I also don't 100% know if that fixes our problem or not. I think we want uh, this to not be based on the head. We want it to be based on the body since the body is the thing that moves discreetly. Uh, so that's kind of another, you can see our, our near plane is also Kind of busted there. Um, so I think really what we want to do now is just focus on the Z because these rooms are not aligned properly. They want to be up more. And so we want to talk about the tile um, placement a little bit more carefully. So that has to happen uh, because otherwise our camera stuff is off, right? These need to be offset up. And uh, and you can see too, it's it's because it's going to be placed down at the bottom of the world here, right? Uh, and that's just wrong. So we've got a lot of issues we got to address there. Uh, so we need to focus on the Z and get that right. Everything else seems okay, uh, except that when we come to this, the head can, can peek right into the next room over. 
Maybe we want that. I don't know. I have to think about that. Maybe we want to be able to do that. Like maybe that's just kind of nice to be able to sort of look into the next room. I don't know, maybe I'll keep that for now. That's kind of fun. It's like, what's in there? Do I really want to go in there? So maybe if the, uh, yeah, I don't know. But that would only be if there was an open door there. You know, if it's like a closed door, you got to walk through it maybe. I don't know. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe we really just do want it to be on the body. Yeah, couldn't tell you. Um, if we wanted it to be on the body instead of on the... Uh, it's, if, if we wanted to do it that way, right? If we wanted to track it, um, I believe when we, uh, when we set the, what the following entity is, we can just choose to set some other following entity, right? So we could, if we wanted to, just say that the body is what the camera's following, and then it just will follow that. So it's not particularly hard for us to make a, a decision either way. Um, and if we did that, then it's, much clearer and we don't get the sort of ambiguous hovering the head uh, over. So, you know, for now, let's leave it like that. We may want to play with it a little bit more later because it was the idea of peeking into a room is kind of interesting. I don't know. It, it may be nothing, but it's just kind of interesting. Um, and then we've kind of got rid of that glitch. So now I think we just want to focus on the Z uh, because now that's clearly wrong now and causing us some problems. So we need to f sort of fix that Z problem. Uh, and then we can sort of go from there, right? <clears throat> okay. The other thing that would be nice would be to add some lights. You know what I'm saying? Uh, at the moment, we sort of have this idea that, that the... Um, the there's like a big blocky light thing that follows the human, that follows the um, play around there. Uh, and also I think we've got kind of like, uh, there's the snake thing. Uh, the add, add snake segment thing, this guy, right? Uh, and there's this, add piece light, uh, it, it probably would be good to do a thing that was just like, hey, um, you know, here's a lamp. And I can just put a lamp somewhere, you know? And uh, maybe with a color. I don't know. Just making this up as I go. Uh, but maybe there's a way to add a lamp. Uh, and that way we can sort of have the rooms have lamps in them. Like, so for example... In here, you could just say, well, you know, whatever the center tile of the room is, uh, you know, maybe we add a lamp there. Uh, so we just say, all right, um, let's put a white lamp into the sim region at, you know, Uh, 
some location that's like min tile x plus x count over two, like the center of the room. Or maybe we do like the corners of the room and the center of the room. I don't know. Uh, but you know, just to see if it works, something like this. Uh, and, and just place that in. And you know, these things should be up a little bit probably. So, you know, maybe just place it towards the top of the thing. Uh, so that's so maybe that kind of thing. I think that's what I want anyway. Conversion from double. Sorry about that. And uh, then, you know, there's just like lamps in the rooms, I guess. Maybe if I didn't screw that up, which I might have. Um, so you can see there's like a big lamp in every room now. It looks like maybe they're a little too bright. Um, so that's probably not the best thing uh, in the world to have, and I admit that. Uh, so maybe back off on the light level a little bit. Uh, but then I could also get rid of the fact that there's a thing falling here around because that was like for debugging and like I don't intend the hero to be holding a light in any circumstance other than the circumstance where he is holding a light for some reason, whatever the light is, right? Uh, so that was, you know, not something that was ever supposed to actually be happening. Uh, so this this here, like, let's just not, you know. Let's not have that. Uh, all right. So now at least we've got those lamps there that are hanging around. Uh, we probably want them to actually be visible. Like, the lamps should probably actually be actual objects in the scene eventually. Uh, at the moment, they're not, and that's fine. Uh, but, you know, eventually we want them to be actual, like, lamps somewhere, placed somewhere, you know. Uh, and we probably also don't want them to be quite so bright as they are. That, that may have been a little bit excessive, uh, and I admit that. Um, so, you know, maybe this is something more like, uh, you know, half, half that brightness. is a little bit more reasonable, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, all right, so if I maybe take that a little bit further, so suppose I don't really want to quite do it that way. What if I just say, you know, it's going to be placed like this. I'm, I'm just curious here what's going to happen because uh, I kind of accidentally got myself distracted. Um, so again, what we want to do is fix that Z stuff for a number of reasons. Um, but until I do that, let me just kind of uh, mess a little bit with this light situation uh, and then we'll fix it later. So if I go into room gen and, and look at that add lamp call, uh, I want to make it so that it's maybe more reasonably sized like a lamp actually would be, you know? Uh, and then maybe I want to place them like in the world as if they're actual objects, right? Um, so, you know, they, they go into the world in some reasonable fashion. So looking at like where uh, the lamps would be placed, maybe there's also, it prevents things from being placed at that location. Um, so like maybe there isn't a traversable there, like you can't actually uh, stand on that square or something like this. So if you imagine maybe that they're at like 0.4 up the tile dim and maybe there's a couple of them in the corners of the room. Uh, so maybe we do something a little bit different. 
uh, like something uh, like say this This is not really how I want to do this long term, so we should probably hold off on anything like this until uh, until I actually start writing more real room generation code. But let's say in here we just said, okay, you know, if the x index uh, equals one and the y index equals one, place a lamp there. And then I can say like, okay, if x equals one and the y index equals y count minus two, just putting it in the corners. Uh, so that's all I was thinking. Uh, then it'll add a lamp to there. Um, and in that case, uh, it will also say like, let's do it this way. Uh, so in this case, we'll always set the, oh, whoops. We don't really need it to do quite that, I guess. So what we would say is uh, just if not on lamp. Because I don't want you to walk where the lamp is, I guess. So that's just kind of super crappy and random. Um, but that's just what we're going with at the moment. Uh, again, I just wanted to kind of put some lights in there uh, for fun. Uh, and we'll try to make that work. Uh, okay, so now I actually just, instead of all of this, I just use the actual position. There we go. Um, yeah, uh, and then we should be good to go. I need to, when we add the lamp, uh, I need to sort of offset it so that it is the correct distance off the ground. Um, I suppose for now I will bake that into this. Uh, maybe, I don't, again, really, we kind of want to get the Z under control now because I'm not really sure what I want to do here. Um, I kind of need to like think it through and, and get a little bit more serious about it. Uh, before we go much further. So anyway, uh, just trying to place these for now as temporary things in the world that will be usable. Um, probably want to be a little higher than that. All right, so now we've got lights at the corners of rooms. Uh, so when we walk around, we should see uh, yeah, and, and we do kind of always have lights there. Um, again, they're not very good in this case because they're kind of too low to the crown. So I think we want them to be a little bit higher up even still than they are. There we go. Uh, and so now we just need to fix that Z. So that's really all I wanted was, yeah, there we go. We got our kind of lamps in there. Uh, and ideally there'd be other sort of some lamps around the room as well. Maybe some lamps in, in the actual, uh, in, in the center. All right. 
So now let's figure out what's going on with our Z. We have a lot of annoying Z stuff in here that we really should just now take the time to clean up. Cause like, as we're going through cleaning up everything, it's just, it's important to like, um, once you know how things work to actually go in and kind of make them more systemic, right? And, and try to get, try to actually have everything be working properly there. Um, so yeah, all of that looks fine. Oh, you know what else I should do? Sorry to keep tweaking there. One thing we probably should do is just add some randomization there. And uh, yeah, I don't remember what the random series was. Is it entropy? Let's say, let's pretend it's entropy. Hey, it is. All right. Uh, so then there should be a little variability of, of the light color. I'll be honest, I don't see any. because I would have expected to see some. I don't know if, are we not using that value? We are, aren't we? There we go. Now we're getting it. Uh, now maybe we don't really want that. And again, we don't have exposure control. So it's, yeah, I mean, until we have a little bit more in terms of the lighting output it maybe is not uh, sensible to have that variability in there but i figured i'd put it in anyway just bring it for a little bit so you can see a little bit of difference between the lights right you can see that one's a little bit cooler that one's a little bit warmer right so that seems pretty good all right um, so now I want to take a look at the Z stuff. How much time do I have left? I've got, I don't know how much time I've got left. Let's ask, because Insobot knows. Oh, four minutes into the q and I don't think that's true. I'm not sh sure about that. Maybe Insobot's wrong about that. I'm, I should add a time part to this. I never really use it, so I never really think to do so. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, we'll just let that tell us when it's done, but I wanna just get the Z stuff working now because the camera's in the wrong place at the moment, uh, and so I wanna fix that, right? Uh, and I'd like to make it so that uh, the, the camera's in the wrong place specifically because the center of the room is down here and that's what it's focusing on. It should not be focusing on that, right? Uh, it should be focusing on the, uh, this area of the floor. And so this needs to be shifted up by a half. And the problem that I have is I don't really know why, right? So we kind of played it fast and loose with a number of Z things as we were going through there because we didn't really know how things were supposed to be going on. But now that we actually are making everything locked down and concrete, one of the problems we get uh, is now we need to make these policies be correct. Now we already made a really nice big step forwards uh, already by figuring out where the tile information is supposed to go. And that was great because that's finally kind of the end of a, of a long time of not really knowing. Uh, exactly where that should go. But now if we look at what we're dealing with here, when we're creating these tile things um, <clears throat> and creating the span of the room, uh, I think we now need to think about this a little bit more in terms of where everything is. The first thing that I think is pretty crappy and that we're gonna have to immediately uh, uh, 
fix, and I'll just start with it because I know it. I don't like it. Is we asymmetrically treat uh, the sizes of cubes, right? And that's just bad. So you can see it here, and it says it right in the to-do. So let's just do it. We're in Z correction mode. Let's stop that nonsense. It's just, just no, just bad, right? Incorrect, false, wrong, no, don't, do not do, right? So when we push a cube, let's just force everyone to update. We're just gonna pass a V3 radius uh, for the cube. And now it's like, that's what you have to do. So just do it and shut up, right? Now that'll break everyone's code. So now we're in happy um, code land, happy code, codeville, codeness, happy. Um, and so uh, we just have to now follow those changes out and fix them all, right? Uh, so fix everywhere that was, you know, that was doing this wrong. Uh, we wanna fix all of that. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first thing here is, uh, I guess when we call push cube, uh, what are we complaining about? Do we have a push cube lofted out somewhere? PV3 radius, three radius, V3 radius. So what are you complaining about? None of the two lobes could be argue types. Could be push cube v3 v3 while trying to match the argument. Render group, loaded bitmap, v3 v3, f32, lighting point state. So that's this one right here, and it does do that, doesn't it? What am I missing? So this does group, bitmap, radius ah I forgot to delete height sorry there we go uh, so now in this one uh, this was already correcting for that you can see it doing it right here right it was correcting for the fact that it wasn't symmetric so now we can just get rid of that and make sure that it is Right, passing it symmetric, so that's great. Um, and so now all we have to do is just V3ify this. So when we're, we're just passing the dimension dot X, but here we can pass uh, I'm not Sure. Oh, it was passing the dimension Y as the emission. Okay, uh, that's one way to do it. I was packing that in there. Uh, clever, Mr. Mr. Cleverman. Uh, I don't really want to do that anymore. Uh, so let's go ahead and not do that. Let's go ahead and do that properly. Uh, so I snuggled this in there uh, for the entity visible piece. I put uh, in that uh, in that dimension there. I was putting for the light. I was it's because you know there's two values for dim in there. Uh, I was uh, sort of cheating and putting the emission level in there for whatever reason. Now, why I would do that, I have absolutely no idea, 
because if it's a light, then it doesn't have a color alpha anyway. So the right place to put that would have been here. So who knows what I was thinking at that time. Probably I just wasn't. Uh, but, you know, some days you've got it, some days you don't in programming, right? Uh, and that day I probably didn't. So, yeah, when we come through here and do an add piece light call, I think add piece light is not that. This is not right. That should do something like this. Um, and then that, I, I think, unless I'm missing something. Uh, so yeah, then when we push the light down, this here, what we really want to do is just make that be the radius of the light in general. Uh, and then I think we're fine. The push cube call uh, now needs to be able to specify a dimension uh, in a more sort of sane way. The problem here that we have is that, again, we don't specify more than one of those. That's okay, uh, because we know that this is what we meant anyway, um, in this case of the encoding. We should probably just upgrade that to just be a regular three-dimensional shape though. Um, so that's kind of a separate uh, situation. So anyway, now what you can see is everything is a little bit off because since we changed the way the Z is encoded, now everyone was used to specifying a height, they're actually specifying a radius now, right? Uh, and so since we're specifying a radius, numbers are now twice as large as they should be because pre for the height only, everything else was still specified as a radius. Um, so we want to probably go ahead and correct that. Now, granted, it's kind of nice with the super high walls. It's, it's a little bit fun. It makes it feel more like a real room, actually. Uh, so who knows, maybe it's actually a good idea. I don't know. Um, I might just leave it that way for now. Um, but regardless of all of that, we still wanna do the one important part that we were talking about before, uh, which is now we need everything to be centered around the actual tile area a little bit more correctly, right? Because we're still totally borked in terms of where this stuff is supposed to be. And there's two things we want to line up with. One is we want it to line up with the chunk boundaries properly, so we aren't constantly processing more entities than we need to inside the pull loop. Um, and then the other thing that we want to do uh, is we want to make sure that we're a little bit more sane about... Uh, um, how it lines up with just the room boundaries in general, right? So everything needs to kind of shift uh, downward. So why is that happening? Well, uh, first of all, I think that's happening partially because, you know, changing the height encoding means that everybody needs to sort of think about what their height should be uh, relative differently than they used to. So for example, uh, inside room gen, where we're adding these pieces and we're specifying uh, offsets and dimensions and these sorts of things. Uh, a lot of these things are now offset in a, in a way that wouldn't necessarily be appropriate, right? Um, so like uh, the, when we add like floor tiles, for example, uh, and, and we're in here adding, um, <clears throat> adding this piece type cube, uh, we add the height. Again, that, that's a, if that's the height right, it should be half of the height. Uh, and then we've got sort of the radius uh, level here. When we pick what the center should be, if that's the point, if zero, 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 the tile location is supposed to be the top of the thing, uh, then we would need to subtract this away, right? So it actually needs to go down by that amount for the actual point for the traversable to line up right there. Now, I'm not saying that's what we want it to be necessarily. I'm just saying if we want it to actually do the thing it was doing before, that's the offset we would have to apply, right? Uh, so now you can see it reverted to the old way it used to be lined up, uh, which again is still wrong for a separate reason, but it's now not, it, it now d doesn't have the additional bug uh, introduced by the Z encoding, right? So now we've restored things back to the way they used to be. Uh, and now we just need to ask ourselves what's going on uh, in terms of the Z encode here, right? So let's talk about that. And one of the things we should do, by the way, is then we wanna also look at the chunk boundaries and make sure our rooms 
are aligned to the chunk boundaries in Z properly. There's no way to get them to align in X properly. That's not gonna happen because uh, since we have variable size rooms, there are no, uh, there's no meaning to that, right? X and Y doesn't happen on a regular uh, grid in any meaningful way that we care about um, in terms of uh, reducing en entity processing. So that's really just irrelevant. Um, but the part that is relevant to us is that floors in general in the game are always uh, relatively consistent. And so we want to make sure uh, that that part is, um, you, you know, we, is not forcing the system that, that gathers entities uh, to do more work than it should strictly for that reason, right? Uh, and so that's kind of nice. Uh, well, it's kind of nice if we do that, right? All right. Uh, so what we want to do here is go, we know that a tile, that the tile Z is like a stack that's like pretty large, right? It's the height of a floor. And what we're trying to do is align the world to that in some sort of smart way. Now, what we want is we want the entities to generally extend no further than the bottom of the floor, and then we want them to end probably somewhere in the middle, right? So if we look at how this is actually positioned, uh, what we end up getting is this change center here where we're placing, or rather the tile location that we're placing right at that zero, zero, we really want probably the room boundaries and the world chunks to be offset like probably a half from that. So in much the same way that we were sort of doing this half tile dim offset here, right, where we offset, we probably want, um, just trying to think of how this is gonna go. So I just wanna try something real quick here. So if we don't offset the Z at all when we correct for the alignment, here's what we get, right? Um, and the reason that we get that is again, because we extend downward and upward from a single Z tile, right? Uh, the same amount. So we sort of pre-baked that notion uh, in. And so as a result, um, Actually, I should say that differently. When we look back at this code here, uh, what we're saying is we know that we want zero, 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 uh, trying to make sure I'm gonna say this right. We know that we pre-stated that we want zero, zero, zero relative to the position of the entity to be where the traversables are placed. So this is the floor, is that zero, zero, zero relative to the entity. We then said the entity, right, is the wall height up from the bottom in this line of code, right? So we pre, we basically pre-said that however high this thing is, the bottom of it will always be at the bottom of the grid and the middle of it therefore will be right roughly in the middle. So unlike the rest of the system, we don't want to offset the room position at that point because we've already sort of said that we weren't going to go below there. 
we didn't, if we had centered everything right at that, then we'd want to do that same offset, but we didn't do that, right? So I think not offsetting by the half tile is what we would want there, I think. Um, <clears throat> and when we do our chunk space mapping, uh, I think we don't really want to do this offset baked into it for any particular reason because I think it will still line up correctly. Now, I don't know, because we haven't done this in a while. So the only way I can really be sure is to draw the chunk locations explicitly. <clears throat> now, I think we had code to do that at one point, but I think we've long since gotten rid of it. Um, we don't draw chunk boundaries anywhere here, I don't think. Uh, Yeah, so, you know, let's say that we did draw chunk boundaries. Uh, so let's say that I want to push a volume outline and I want to just say like chunk boundary and I'm going to set that to some kind of a saucy rectangle. Uh, and then I can compute the chunk boundary quite easily, right? Um, once I know, for example, where my simulation center is going to be, um, or really any uh, world position um, that we've got. So like, for example, uh, this, the camera's location or something, doesn't matter which one, any one at all. That will have one bound I can use, and then I can create another bound I can use out of that, right? So for example, if I want to create the chunk boundary here, what I could do is say, all right, uh, here's the world camera P. So this is like min chunk P. Uh, and the max chunk P is just the min chunk P uh, with a plus, right? So if I go in here to look at the world position, Not that, this. So if I just add one to each chunk position, uh, and furthermore, I zero the offset, I've effectively created a one chunk rectangle out of two of these things, right? So if I then map those into sim space, I can then make exactly that thing that I wanted. Uh, by doing a rect min max with map uh, into sim space and be done. Where's my sim region? Uh, and I think that's all we would really need to draw it. Um, that would just show us how big one chunk would be. Uh, and so when you look out here, right, now you can see where the chunk boundaries are. So there's a chunk boundary. And what I was trying to say is I want that to line up with a floor so that the entities fit properly within it. So like I said, I think now the correct way to do that, and you can see it's not lined up with the floor, uh, is to get rid of the offsetting uh, that's going on there so that when we create the world, uh, it's lined up properly. Uh, and so now you can see that it does line up. So now that offset's gone and everything's fine. And we're just done with the series as well. Uh, so, you know. So now if I turn everything off here, uh, and get to sort of a, a more reasonable situation. So now I think everything is pretty reasonable. 
Um, you know, we're hopping around, we've got our lights, we've got our rooms. Uh, there's not a lot of glitching. Our camera is not, does not have a good interpolator. Uh, and that's something that we're going to want to do. Uh, we, the camera has, doesn't have a real interpolator at the moment. It's kind of busted. Um, but now we can sort of hop around and have some lights and have whatever. Um, and, and, you know, this now feels like a proper, I'm going around exploring the game. So the next things that we need to do are to the camera. And maybe we'll do those a little bit before doing the art. Maybe we'll do this uh, on uh, next Saturday um, and we'll start the art on Sunday or something. Uh, but what I'd like to do there is just add something that allows scrolling around the larger rooms because I don't really want to zoom out further, I don't think. Um, so add something that allows scrolling around the larger rooms and just add a more like sane interpolator to, uh, to the mix. Uh, so that's good for today. Uh, let me also turn off our room boundary code here. Uh, we don't need that and we don't need this. Uh, and there we go. Uh, so there's a, a happy hero hopping around with uh, lighting and stuff and no art and uh, the camera's tracking him nicely. And then the only problem we really have is if you get to a room that's too big so the camera doesn't want to pull out any further, uh, you can't see the whole room. And so that's where we would want that scrolling. And you can also see that the interpolation isn't great. Um, and so those are the two things I think that really need fixing there, right? Um, and so that all feels pretty good. Is there any particular reason why the sim region and or lighting region are based on world space rather than connected rooms? I know that's how it was originally put together, but are there any benefits, disadvantages either way? Also, if you place the lighting boundary right before a lamp and then move so it enters the light region, doesn't it kind of pop in a little? It's more of a fade, but hopefully you know what I mean. Entering the big square room does what I mean with the lamps at the top. Um, yeah, so there's kind of two questions in there. So, uh, the, there is no particular reason to use world space rather than connected rooms. We could choose to use connected rooms in the future. Um, I don't have a strong opinion about it yet. Um, so we'll see a little further on what we want to do there. We may want to do connected rooms, uh, and we may not. So we'll see. Uh, there's... Advantages and disadvantages. The advantages to doing connected rooms is that you know you're using one discrete like chunk of world uh, that makes semantic sense to the game design. The advantage of using world space is it's a constant amount no matter where you are. So it doesn't matter how many rooms, uh, how many, how big the rooms connected to you are, you aren't like taking a variable length hit there. So there's there's some differences, but you know. Uh, as for placing the lightning boundary, yeah, uh, there's different ways you can do that. So uh, I actually am okay with fade in. Uh, I think it's kind of nice actually. Uh, so I would probably leave it the way it is now. If you don't want the, the light to fade in like that, then what you can do is just enlarge those boundaries, right? So make the lighting boundary bigger uh, and then you just cost more CPU time or GPU time if you end up using a GPU, right? Uh, so I'm actually okay with that. We may enlarge it slightly more than it is right now, right? So it may be that the optimal is actually a little bit bigger. Um, uh, and maybe we want the, you know, one thing we could do is say the active room should always be entirely included in the light boundary, right? So maybe not connected rooms, but just the active room. Uh, and so some of those things we will address later on as we go. And since we have the f ability to specify either in any way, we have the freedom to 
sort of um, tune that. Uh, I think there were two typos. Get camera offset Z for dim had X count typo. Uh, let me tell a second. Get camera offset Z for dim. Um. Ah, you are right. There's one right there. Uh, and push light had push light put cube at XXC. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, intentional, I think. Are you sure it wasn't XXY? I think the one you're talking about. Uh, maybe intentional. So I think it's the push piece one probably that you're talking about. Are you talking about this one? Because that one is intentional. Uh, because it only stores a two dimension. It stores just the radius for X and Y the same. So it duplicates that out. I haven't really followed much, but are those static lights stimulated? If yes, would it be good to make their lighting pre-calculated to improve performance? Uh, so no, I don't want them to be pre-computed because uh, as soon as we add in, um, we have to do a little bit of uh, stuff in the um, pipeline to allow the moving objects to interact with the lights uh, just by add, we just need to add light volumes for them and then extract the lighting uh, for when we light the sprites. So it won't be static, right? When someone moves in front of the light, it'll block the light uh, from getting past in that direction. So we don't really want any static lighting in the game. Will up-facing sprite cards be affected by the lighting feature? Yes, uh, after we do exactly what I just said. Uh, and, and the up-facing sprite cards bit is a little bit dicey just because we don't really have normal maps for the sprites. Um, so, so will we do shadow maps? Uh, no, I don't really want any hard edges uh, in the game. It should be like softer. So there won't be any shadow mapping. Uh, there's just general light transmission. I also don't really know how you would even do shadow mapping with sprite cards because you would need to know what the sprite looked like from the perspective of the light, which you don't know. Now, I guess you could just guess, like always make the sprite face the light maybe, but I don't know that that would cast a very good shadow. It might cast some really wrong looking shadows fairly often. Um, so that part I also don't, really want um, among other things I need to make stairwells happen here because we can't the dungeon is beneath us and we can't we can't get down there. 
because the rim, current rim generator doesn't ever do that. Do we have any questions? Uh, yeah, so rooms below us. So here's a, a something that we will probably want to do. Uh, I don't ever want to compute lighting for a bigger region than I have to. So when you look at something in perspective, things that are lower down, you would have to like light much bigger areas. And I don't want to do that. Uh, so what we will probably do is I will probably write the shader such that the fog will now be computed um, in, a, in a frustum that goes straight down from the light. So this stuff will be alphaed out entirely, is what I'll probably do. So I, I, don't, I definitely don't want to have to expand the light volume out to size, it's just too much. So I anticipate when I get down to fixing um, those problems uh, to be much more conservative and like so that basically the light volume narrows down to a point like that uh, and everything alphas out because I don't want to have to dump more things into the lighting routine. Uh, Vasher, I'm cleaning up the color handling to track down rendering differences between my OpenGL and Metal backends. Uh, okay, uh, are you you're talking about like in a handmade hero fork or something, or in your own renderer? Anyway, is there a generally accepted way to pass store colors in the pipeline, i.e. pre-convert everything in the asset packer to linear or widest color space? The world generator code is currently linearizing the sRGB color input so that they can then be reconverted to sRGB by OpenGL during blending. This seems inefficient. Um, so I guess what I would say is, um, it really depends on what you're doing. So when you store something, if you can store it in sRGB, you generally want to because it will be smaller than storing it in actual linear color space. That's the whole reason why we have sRGB, right? If we didn't have to worry about storage space, we would just always store everything as like a floating point number that was in linear light because why not? It just everything works and then you don't care. But generally speaking, you don't want to do that because like, especially for bitmaps, which are very large, uh, you want to be able to store like 8-bit color data and have that just work. And the only way to do that is in a color space that actually has a better gamma than that, right? Um, so I guess what I would say is, you know, you have to be judicious with it. Sometimes you want things in sRGB, sometimes you want things in linear. Anytime you're doing math on it, it needs to be in linear, period. Uh, you can't do math on sRGB directly and have good results unless you're really careful uh, and have all kinds of special stuff in there to make sure it's right. 
Um, so basically what I would say is, you know, make sure you, uh, you know, make, make sure you think about where in the pipeline you are doing any kind of math, like even like making something brighter by multiplying by two or making it dimmer by multiplying on half or something, right? Um, that's what I would say. So in terms of the way we're doing it, I think it's probably the case that we're mostly reasonable about where we do it, but there's probably some places where maybe we should just keep things in sRGB because we don't really need to modify them much. Uh, but generally speaking, I don't know that there's that many of the places that we're actually doing that. I think we're probably doing it roughly right. Um, there may be one or two places where we could just leave something as sRGB and save some space, but otherwise I think we're doing it mostly right. Uh, Should we change the color of the hero sprite depending on the surrounding light? He looks too bright in the darkers. Uh, well, yes, the, spr the sprites will actually be added to the lighting solution when we go back to do uh, the final lighting point placement stuff. Um, so they will actually get lit properly, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so um, it's kind of weird how your brain kind of ignores most of it and it kind of looks okay anyway, but it, in general, yeah, we want the sprites to be lit. Uh, so that will actually happen uh, when we, when we actually uh, finish the lighting pipeline stuff. Because remember, we've got more work to do there. Uh, Jackson Benan, is that a question? <laughs> Doesn't look like one. It has a Q colon in front of it, but it's not really a question. Shouldn't lights behave as other entities in regards to the sim region? Um, hmm. What do you mean by that? Behave in what sense? Um... Yeah, what, what do you mean by behave in that sentence? I thought they are visible when outside. Well, let me just go ahead and show you what's going on and then you can tell me uh, what's happening. So here is the simulation region, right? Everything that's drawn here is the simulation region. Now, obviously there's a lot more stuff in the game, but this is the only part that's in the simulation region right now. So if we hop to the next area, right? You can see the simulation region shift over time to now be here, right? And that's the only part that's getting simulated now, right? Now the lights, they get pulled in because they're normal entities just like anything else. They get pulled in as far as the simulation region is concerned, but they don't participate in the lighting solution until they're actually in the lighting bound. And the reason for that is because lighting is very expensive, right? It's the most expensive thing that you can do is lighting typically, unless you've got some crazy physics <clears throat> happening. Uh, and so we just don't actually allow them to do anything besides just sit there until they actually come in. Um, 
And hopefully that just give hopefully that explains what's happening there, uh, but maybe not. Uh, ho hopefully you you sort of can see now what what those two regions are. And again, the reason for that, I would be happy to run the lighting on everything in the sim region. That'd be great. I just don't know that we're ever going to get the lighting up to a level of performance where that would be feasible, because lighting is one of those things that just wants as much horsepower as you can throw at it. So. Even if we can do, if we could do the whole sim region lighting wise, the lighting solution would be worse quality than if we just did a smaller region because we could spend that same amount of flops producing better lighting solutions for a smaller region that we actually can see. So I want to make sure we only ever light the part that's actually going to give us um, uh, useful visual effects, right? So. All right. I don't know what that was complaining about, but all right. Uh, would you have fireflies and will you call them lighting bugs? Um, that's a very good idea. All right, thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. We will be back here next week uh, when we will go ahead and add a few more touches to the camera. Uh, and then we'll start uh, working on art stuff uh, because again, I wanna get the lighting kind of squared away um, uh, before we go too much further into world generation stuff because I want the, the lighting and the world gen to work together closely and be good. Uh, so I really want the, to have some art in there so we can see how the lighting uh, affects the artwork and vice versa. So we'll just be working on that a little bit. Uh, so that's what's coming up next weekend. Hope to see you here for that. Until then, have fun programming, everyone, and I'll see you all on the internet. Take it easy, everybody.